Hi, this video will be unscripted. I hope you don't mind because I wasn't able to do anything in the past two weeks. I had a knee surgery, my meniscus was broken and I was on painkillers and uh, couldn't move at all. And now that I can walk again, I started to work and uh, yeah, I decided to make a mini series about uh, interfacing uh, this camera um, and um, the TFT display to display the images from the camera on uh, ESP32 and this is based on the Arduino IDE using the ESP32 extension. To make up for the time I was gone I will release all the parts of the mini series within one week so more frequent updates here. In today's part I will introduce the hardware and all the resources you need to start uh, rebuilding it. I want this to become more of a community project since the documentation on this camera isn't completely available and I just want to share my experience with it to make it simpler for other people and uh, yeah, I hope you do so as well. You will find the latest state of the project and also links to the parts and informations on the project page which is linked below and let's start. So this is my prototype. It uh, works with color and almost two frames a second because the uh, one wire SPI interface to the TFT isn't that fast and uh, also the readout of the frame uh, as well. But yeah, it could go up to five frames per second. Then we have the camera module here. It's the OV7670 with the FIFO memory and an oscillator. This is quite important since there are also the versions without the oscillator in the memory and they are harder to interface since you have to do the pixel clock and uh, real tough timing. And this is something for later. These are for like $2 and this one below $10. But it's still the cheapest camera available. Uh, I think uh, that's easy to interface on a breadboard or with jumper wires so far. So I uh, have used this. I'm currently using the Lolin 32 board, uh, which has the ESP32 on it. And uh, yeah, it's quite nice. It's breadboard friendly. The good thing about the Lolin 32 is that it uses the actual GPIO pin numbers here. At the back side of the board it even shows more labels like the hardware SPI here that we are using for the TFT and also here the I2C which is uh, used for uh, interfacing the camera. In the beginning I wired everything using jumper wires here uh, on the breadboard and this was an okay solution but um, here some of the wires came loose and so I decided to solder a board here on this perf board with some uh, female headers. As you can see this requires many GPI opens that's why we need the ESP32 and it's uh, easy to interface the camera since the ESP works on 3.3 volts and the camera as well. The code that I've written is independent from the microcontroller so if you want to use it with an Atmel microcontroller working on 5 volts you need to use a level shifter to the lines that are going from the microcontroller to the camera. Since we are working on 3.3 volts on the microcontroller, the only two parts that we need are those resistors. These are 4.7K ohm resistors uh, between VCC and the uh, data and clock line of the I2C interface. I figured out that the pull-up resistors of the ESP32 are too high to get a fast timing on the I2C there. The pin configuration is quite flexible, you can define the pins in the code. The only fixed pins at the moment are MOSI and SCK for, of the native SPI interface to the TFT. To be able to use this specific TFT module, uh, we need to set this to 3.3 volts on the back side here. There is a jumper, you can see um, shorted jumper means 3 volts here. So I just put some solder on this pad here and now it works with uh, the 3.3 volts provided by the microcontroller. There are some pins that I not use right now and the SD card pins here because I don't use the SD card so far. Um, 
and here on this side we can see the pins that are needed to run the TFT and uh, this is only ground BL stands for backlight so you can use backlight or not but you won't see anything without backlight then we have VCC which is 3.3 volts uh, the clock of the SPI so this will be connected to the SCK and then we have data in uh, which will be the MOSI and then we have a DC I don't know what this is so maybe if you know put this in the comment and then we have CS which is chip select which only activates the S SPI of the TFT if we want to write it and then with the reset which uh, isn't mandatory you can connect this to the enable pin of the microcontroller so it will be uh, reset when you reset the microcontroller now let's take a look at the camera so this is the version with the FIFO memory as you can see and this is the oscillator which takes care of the pixel clock and um, the only thing that you have to care about is the vertical sync to start and stop the writing of the frame to the memory and you can also use it to read the frame from the memory so let's take a look at the pins we have 3.3 volts here ground here and SIOC and SIOD those are the pins for the compatible uh, I squared C interface uh, it didn't work for me with the implementation for the ESP32 on Arduino so I have uh, used my own implementation to write the registers uh, reading doesn't doesn't work yet uh, you can just take a look in the code or tune in tomorrow where I explain all the codes here's the vertical sync then we have the horizontal reference which I didn't use yet but it could come handy I don't know yet and then we have the data lines eight data lines here which I used to read from the memory then we have uh, all the pins down here reset power down str i don't know what this is for i don't use this and um, the only important pins are uh, read clock rck in this case uh, write flag output enable flag then we have write reset and read reset so these are important to reset the memory pointers uh, where to read and where to write uh, the image frame yeah let's spot everything together and uh, test if it still works so here it is to make this part complete I will show some resources so first of all you can find all the information also on my page for this project and there are some details about the parts and um, also the schematic how to wire everything up and um, the link also we get some libraries for Arduino that we need for the TFT display the data sheets are linked here and some similar projects i got really useful information from the random lab um, there was um, the project with the atmel mega microcontroller and also with the fifo camera so there are also described different types of this fifo cameras and some wiring there and there are also some links to older projects some of them are kind of dead since they are quite old but uh, there's still some useful information there. Also to mention is the only project that have used ESP32 that I found on the web so far. And uh, this is from Ivan from Espressive. And um, this is a camera demo uh, using the ESP32 for the um, ES Espressive IDF, which I unfortunately didn't get running yet. Um, and uh, this is really using the hardware capabilities of the ESP to get a really tr a good transfer of the image data using the DMA and uh, yeah this is really low-level stuff and uh, 
it's quite interesting i will probably get there someone but um yeah it's a very interesting project and uh, if you are using the expressive idf already you maybe want to try this project as well um, i'm not sure if it's working also with the same camera at least um, there is somewhere a statement it should be compatible but um, they're using a different a newer version the data sheet on the camera that i found got uh, 30 pages but it isn't complete. I didn't find any uh, more complete version of it. Um, it has some timings described and also some registers, but many registers are missing. Um, this seems to be not disclosed. So uh, some of the registers are described as uh, reserved but they have to be used to get this running at all. So here, for example, some white balance control and so on. And uh, yeah, there are some registers that are not described here, which are needed to get the colors running. So unfortunately, I don't have a complete version. If you find more information on the registers, um, that will be nice. Um, there are some header files around that have uh, the most of the registers, but still they are not complete as well. So um, yeah, maybe we can get the information from somewhere. The A very useful document that I found by coincidence uh, was the application note for the camera. Um, it uh, explains, or at least it shows um, the registers that have to be set for different um, timings and uh, resolutions and also for saturation and some color settings. But um, yeah, as you can see, the registers are not named. We have just the hexadecimal numbers and um, RGB raw format here. Um, but um, there's not described how to change um, the resolution correctly to lower resolutions so we can't use this and also the RGB 565 uh, isn't shown at all so this document isn't complete as well and I hope we can figure out a way to configure this camera correctly for um, any resolution and uh, color format we have also a data sheet for the FIFO memory and yeah, this is well explained. Uh, you can get some information there and yeah, not, not very complicated. I have uploaded the code also to my GitHub account. So you find also the link on the project page. I've put some links to the parts and uh, we got the camera for $9 here, um, then the Wemos microcontroller for like $7, uh, and then the SPI TFT for $4. So that's $20 for a complete camera setup. Without the TFT, we can build for around $16 a smart home camera, which we can access remotely. At least that's the plan for the end of this week. I hope you like this project and give it a try. Tomorrow I will explain how the code works and the timings. And I think we will do a great project using this camera. So don't miss it. Tune in again. Bye.